the Son of Righteousness is risen with healing in His reign. Oh yeah, the Son of Righteousness is risen with healing in His reign. Oh, and He shines, and He shines on you, and He shines on me. He shines for all the world to see. Righteousness has risen with healing in his way. The sun of righteousness is risen with healing in his way. Oh, and there's health, and there's health for you, and there's health for me. He gave his life for The Son of Righteousness, sing. The Son of Righteousness is risen with healing in His ways. The Son of Righteousness is risen with healing in His ways. Come on, let's add. And there's grace for you. Come on. And there's grace for you. And there's grace for me. He gave His life for Righteousness is risen, healing in his name. The Son of Righteousness is risen, healing in his name. Come on, and there's grace for you. Come on, and there's grace for you, and there's grace for me. He gave his life abundantly. Can somebody say God is good? He's good all the time. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him this morning, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Oh, praise God. Well, this morning's message is entitled, The Mystery of Darkness and Light. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me begin by saying this. The gospel is not a life that you can live. Amen. By this time, have you learned that? Yes. We must realize this, that the gospel has nothing to do with us. Hallelujah. Some of you are kind of bewildered. If you don't understand this, you will constantly try to fit your thinking, your lifestyle, and your standard into the shape and form that is totally opposite of the design that God has fashioned for us. We need to be aware of the fact that in ourselves, no matter how refined and polished you are, we are still a square pig, trying to fit ourselves into the round formation of the gospel. How many of you know that you can't put a square pig into a round hole? and expect to have a perfect fit. Of 
course not, and yet we still try to make it fit, though. Therefore, to stop us from our insanity, our ignorance, God has to send us problems, big problems sometimes. He sends us darkness to make us realize that something is wrong with how we are living our Christian lives. Now we have to be aware that the problem that we have is not really the problem. Did you know that? You thought that the problem, your husband was the problem. You thought your wife was the problem. Your children was the problem. The problem is that we don't have the solution. If we have the solution, problems can come our way, but we won't be rattled and stressed out because we have the answer. If something goes wrong in your life, but if you know how to solve it, hey, is that a problem? No. And who is the answer that resolves all problems? Ooh, praise God, it's none other than Jesus Christ. But we've got to really know that. Do we really know that in the midst of our trials? Do we really know that he's the answer, solution, and remedy to all of our problems in the midst of our trials where everything is falling apart, you're feeling agitated, you're feeling frustrated, you're feeling just so depressed. Do you believe at that time Jesus is the Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God? I think we're getting to believe that more and more. Hallelujah. Sometimes we mentally know that he is the Christ, but we don't really know in different times that he is the Christ. But Colossians 1.16 tells us, By Christ all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. And if he's created all things, surely he can fix all things. Amen. You know, some years ago, actually years ago, when the Model T Ford initially came out, a young man would always park his car by the walkway close to the beach to kind of show off his vehicle. Then, you know, all the girls would pass by and would be standing, you know, just, you know kind of being proud of his, his car, showing off. And then late one Sunday, this young man was attempting to drive home, but somehow his car wouldn't start. Fortunately, this young man knew some things about auto mechanics, so he lifted up the hood and tinkered around the engine with his screwdriver and tried to start the car again, but it didn't start. He tried several times to remedy the situation, and yet he wasn't successful. Each time, he failed. Sadly, he just sat in despair next to his car by the walkway. Then, an older gentleman came walking by and said, What's the matter? What's the matter, young man? The young man told him that the car wouldn't start. The old man said, Can I try to look at the engine and see what's wrong? The young man, shaking his head, said, Well, go ahead, but I don't think it's going to be any help, be of any help. And so the old man said, well, by the way, do you, do you have a screwdriver? And the young man just passed and handed him over the screwdriver. So the old man looked at the engine, and he did something with the screwdriver. And then he asked the young man if he could start the car once again. The young man was very hesitant to do it because he knew that it wouldn't work. But reluctantly, he got up out of courtesy to this old man and tried to start the engine. But lo and behold, the engine went boom, and it started. Oh, and the old man just smiled, and he handed the screwdriver back to the young man, and he quietly walked away. The young man began to just chase after the young man, uh, the old man, he says, wait, 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 sir, he says, please wait, I want to thank you. But the old man just kept quietly walking. He just 